Uh, friends, uh, we shall study modeling of excitation systems. Uh, last time we have discussed the modeling of DC excitors, AC excitors and today we will discuss the modeling of some more important components of the excitation system and then we will discuss a few typical excitation system models uh, at the end. Now, in any excitation system, we have uh, a regulator AC regulator and the output signal of the regulator is amplified right and for that we use amplifiers. The amplifiers may be electronic amplifiers, may be magnetic amplifiers or rotating amplifiers right. Now, these amplifiers <coughs> we will just uh, see how these amplifiers are modeled. A basic model of a amplifier whether it is rotating or whether it is electronic can be put in this form that the amplifier can be presented by the gain constant k a and a time constant t a. That is the transfer function of the amplifier is k a divided by 1 plus s times t a. Now, this amplifier will have the maximum and minimum limits that is irrespective of what is the input signal coming, the output will be limited to the maximum value we call this as a the V r max and V r minimum. For example, if you take the electronic amplifier, okay, there is always a saturation and therefore, the maximum value which is available will be determined by the characteristic of electronic amplifier. Now, these two time constants k a and uh, these two constants the gain constant k a and this time constant t a play a very significant role in the stability of the excitation system and therefore, these parameters are required to be tuned. The next, the next important component of the excitation system is the excitation system stabilizer. The excitation system stabilizer is a closed uh, is a closed loop system uh, to stabilize the, the performance of the exciter itself. Okay. Therefore, here if I consider in general an exciter having its armature and fill winding, right, the output of the exciter we represent as E x. Now, the this one simplest arrangement for stabilization which I have shown here is using a, a transformer that is you take a transformer and connect the primary of the transformer across the output of the exciter and the <coughs> output of this transformer that is the secondary of this transformer is used to give a signal for stabilization. Now, here in this arrangement you can see here that this V error is the signal or error signal coming from the regulator that is from the summing point. In any regulator we will have a summing point right and we get the error signal. Now, to this error signal we subtract this signal which is the output of the step this transformer ok you can just this transformer and this signal which you see here actually is V error minus V 2 right. This signal is amplified and fed to the field winding of the exciter. Therefore, here is a feedback loop. Now, this feedback loop is used for stabilizing the exciter this is called the uh, exciter system stabilizer right. Now, we will just see something more about how this uh, excitation system stabilizer is model. That is, we will develop a transfer function model 
of the excitation system stabilizer. Now, to develop the transfer function model, what we require is that what is the transfer function relating V1 to V2? That is, V1 is the input signal and V2 is the output signal. We will relate this V1 to V2. Now, this can be done by writing the basic circuit equations that is you can assume actually that this is the primary of the transformer has resistance R 1 leakage uh, uh, self inductance L 1 and mutual inductance M. Okay. Then the primary circuit, circuit equation can be written as V 1 equal to R 1 I 1 plus S L 1 I 1 plus S times M I 2. Okay. Therefore, here we are using this Laplace transform variable S okay, instead of d by dt. Okay. Therefore, the basic equation is V 1 is equal to R 1 I 1 plus L 1 times d I 1 by dt plus m times d I 2 by dt. Right. Therefore, this derivative term we have replaced by Laplace transform operator S. The output voltage V 2 can be written as R 2 I 2 L 2 times d i 2 by d t which is again written as S times L 2 i 2 plus S times m into i 1. Okay. There are the two basic equations which can be written for the stabilizing <coughs> transformer. <coughs> now, here one important thing which we have to observe is that the current i 2 which flows in the input of amplifier is very low. Any electronic amplifier or whatsoever type of amplifier we look for right, their input impedance is very high and therefore, the current I 2 is practically equal to 0 right. Now, when we make this assumption that I 2 is 0 we substitute I 2 equal to 0 in these two equations right, then our equations will reduce to this form V 1 equal to R 1 plus S L 1 into I 1, V 2 equal to S M times I 1 that is in these two equations I am substituting I 2 equal to 0 right. And therefore, the transfer function relating V 2 to V 1 that is V 2 by V 1, V 2 by V 1 can be written as S M divided by R 1 plus S times L 1 right. Now, you divide both uh, numerator and denominator by R 1 right. Then you will get the transfer function in the form S k f plus divided by 1 plus S times T f right, where this constant k f becomes m divided by R 1 this m divided by r 1 and this time constant T f will become L 1 divided by R 1 and therefore, we have a transfer function relating the output voltage this is a little mistake I think there is a mistake here it is V 2 by V 1 V 2 by V 1 output to input transfer function is output to input V 2 by V 1 is equal to S times k f that by 1 plus S times T f right. Now, these two parameters again that is the gain constant k f and this time constant T f they are the important parameters these parameters are also required to be tuned. Okay. Uh, <coughs> further you can see here actually that this is this represents a derivative feedback. This represents a derivative feedback. In fact, in this arrangement, in this arrangement, this transformer primary winding is designed to have high resistance. So, that when there is no variation of this output voltage, there is no variation of this output voltage, 
right then there will be no output coming on the secondary of the transformer right therefore since this is the this is the dc voltage here right therefore as as long as there is fluctuation or variations are taking place in this output voltage there will be a corresponding feedback signal coming otherwise the moment actually they we have steady state operation right then there will be some dc current flowing in this circuit and there will be no output from this stabilizing transformer now this is one arrangement which is used for realizing the derivative feedback although there may be alternative arrangements to achieve this derivative feedback now here we will just briefly talk about the limits in the uh, literature documented by ieee standards or the ieee standards we define the two types of limits one is called wind up limits another is called non wind up limits now i will just distinguish between what we mean by the wind up limits and non wind up limits in wind up limits to illustrate this what we have taken is that we have consider an integrator a transfer function of an integrator now in the wind up limit this is the transfer function of the integrator 1 by s okay input signal is u output is v okay then we are putting actually the limiting functions lx and ln and the resulting output is y that is the output from this complete limiter is is y while input is u right now here in this arrangement when you look actually this transfer function model of this integrator then we can write down the equation dv by dt equal to u that is this transfer function basically represents this first order differential equation okay dv by dt equal to u right now here in this arrangement in case this v that is the signal v which is coming here that is output of the integrator if v is greater than ln and less than lx that is it is in this range it is lying in the range between maximum and minimum then y is equal to v this y is same as v in case this v this signal that is output of the integrator is greater than equal to lx then y is set equal to lx okay that is this derivative uh, this derivative or dv by dt equal to u this when it is solved okay if you get actually the signal v if it is exceed this upper limit lx then the output will be set equal to lx this is very simple actually any system any system right the basic concept of the limiter is that if the signal is exceeding then we set it to the upper or lower limit similarly if v is less than equal to ln we set this to the lower limit ln right so that so that the the the, the device which is used actually to uh, give output to v or uh, basically the output y right right will have this uh, output confined to the upper and lower limit and when this output is less than this and greater than this the v is y is equal to v this is very simple this is called actually the wind up type limits there are certain devices when they are used for limiting right then the integrator function of those devices can be represented by this model the another limit or another type of limit is called non wind up limit in non wind up limit the the symbol which is used to represent the non wind up limit is we have this integrator transfer function 1 by s here input is u output is y and instead of putting it outside this lx and ln 
that is we had put earlier here. Now, they are put along with the block. The idea here is basically that there is output y, output y which is going to be produced, produced will be confined between L x and L n right and this out, out, output will never be equal to uh, the what we have given actually in the previous equation that uh, v, the v was shown here right. Therefore, there is a limit which is imposed by the device itself right. Now, the equations which describe the this type of limit is that if y is greater than l n or less than l x then d y by d t is put to be equal to u. That is in this function if input signal that is the the you have the output signal y which is within the limits then d y by d t is put to be equal to u right. In case this output is greater than l x then d y by d t becomes 0 and and y is equal to l x. Similarly, if y is less than equal to l n and d y by d t is less than 0 ok that is it is it is less as well as this quantity is g, uh, less than g is negative then d y by d t is again set to 0 and y is set equal to l n. This is the basic difference between the two types of limits that is the wind up and non wind up type limits. Therefore, when you read the uh, read this literature on excitation systems you will find that these two terms are frequently referred. Now, another next component of the excitation system model will be discussed now that is the low voltage gate and high voltage gate that is H v gate and L v gate. Now, we have seen actually in our uh, discussion on excitation systems, we have to incorporate the under excitation limit and over excitation limit. Therefore, basically this is a gate where we get we put two inputs u and v right. The for H for L v gate, L v gate the condition is that if v if v is less than equal to u right then y is equal to u that is out of the two when the suppose u is less than v then output will be equal to u. Similarly, if u is greater than v output will be equal to v that is a very simple uh, gate where we have two inputs one output the this gate will always ensure actually that output is equal to the smaller of the two inputs and the next <coughs> type of gate is called H V gate H V gate where input signals are again u and v output is y right. Now, here if u is greater than equal to v right y is equal to u it means the output is equal to the larger of the two signals. If u is less than v less than v then output is y is equal to v because here v is greater v is bigger than u right. Therefore, these two gates are also required actually to model the complete excitation systems because we have to we have to implement the under excitation limit and over excitation limit and these limits are are realized by using these H V and L V gates. The next important component of excitation system is the terminal voltage transducer and load compensator. Terminal voltage transducer and load compensator. We have discussed in our previous discussion the need for load compensator and the function performed by a load compensator. 
Now, the this block is used to compute a voltage V C i, V C i, which is derived by by adding a voltage drop R C plus J times X C into I T to the terminal voltage E T. Right? And therefore, so far this block is concerned, the input will be the terminal voltage, a phasor quantity, I T is the terminal current of the machine, and these two quantities are processed here in this block, and we get a signal V C I, which is a magnitude of this this signal E T plus J plus R C plus J times X into I T. Okay? Now, this signal V C I okay, is, is, uh, when it is processed, right, there will be some time delay in the processor and therefore, this time delay is represented by this transfer function 1 divided by 1 plus S times T R. Now, this time constant T R is generally very small in many cases or for many studies or many simulation studies this time constant can be even neglected, but its value is generally very small. Therefore, we can say that the terminal voltage transducer and load compensator is having two blocks, the first processing block where we get a signal which is obtained by computing this expression and taking the magnitude of this expression and then it passes through the first order transfer function which represent the time delay of the transducer. Okay. Now, we have come to a stage where we will be in a position to discuss the complete model of the excitation systems. Now, for discussing this complete model, uh, let us let us again look into the uh, models which were developed for DC exciter and AC exciters, because I will be discussing only three models. One is known as DC 1 A model, I triple E DC 1 A model, another is I triple E AC 1 A model and third is I triple E ST 1 A model. In the I triple E, I triple E standard 1992 right it has large number of models now the the subscripts which are put here i will just mention why these different subscripts are there that is dc1 a that is initially when the first uh, publication came they were called as dc exciters or dc ieee dc model or ieee dc exciter model ieee ac exciter model ieee ST or static excitation system model. Then in 1981, 81, the IEEE gave another report where to distinguish this first generation model from the second generation model, they put a subscript 1, they call DC 1, AC 1, AC 2 like uh, AC 2 like that. Therefore, 10 different models were given. Then in 1992, when they further revised, right, these models were added one more subscript. There is DC 1A, that is A was added. Then somewhere in 1996, uh, when another can say uh, report came, where this A was replaced by B. Therefore, you will find actually in the last or the recent uh, uh, report, they have used these symbols, say DC 1B or AC 1 B, B stands for that somewhere in 1996 to distinguish from the different models. Now, here since uh, it is not possible to draw this model in totality on one uh, sheet, right. Uh, therefore, what I have done here is to illustrate, we will take, we will represent actually the various building blocks separately and these blocks will be assembled. Okay? Now, if you look actually the a DC exciter model, then in this DC exciter model we can say that output is EFD or EX and input is the output of the regulator that is VR. 
that is E E f equal to V r. Therefore, I will be representing this D C exciter model with the help of a block okay, by saying that input is V r or output is E f d. Okay. Therefore, to draw all these things on the same sheet becomes very uh, complicated and uh, it is not possible to show in a small sheet. Now, when you look at the complete model for the IEEE type DC 1 A excitation system that is the IEEE type DC 1 A excitation system is shown here. This block represents the DC exciter model, which is now we have developed, right? Which has saturation function, which has uh, one upon s times t, and also the constant k, right? All these are part of this model. The output is EFD and input is VR. Then we have one model that is called amplifier model. That is, we require an amplifier, right? That I am just showing the amplifier with non wind up limits. That is, here in this block diagram, the amplifier is uh, transfer function is k a divided by 1 plus s times t a with those v r max and v r min limits. Then, input to this amplifier comes through an h v gate, h v gate, and here here this H V gate will get a signal from a transfer function this is normally called compensator that is that is for for obtaining the desired performance of the DC excitation system we may add a compensator in the forward loop. Okay. Therefore, this is basically a compensator. Okay. The output of this compensator is compared with the with the under excitation limit, and we know actually that when the under excitation limit, okay, the output will be, or I can say this, this is realized using H V gate. That is, output will be corresponding to the higher of the two signals. So that we will realize actually that the the excitation system will not go below a certain limit prescribed that is the under excitation limit. Now, here I put the star here to show that this under excitation limit can be realized by feeding this signal at the summing point also. Therefore, there are two alternative ways of feeding this under excitation limit. That is this signal if it is not required to be fed it, if it is fed somewhere right at the summing point okay, then we can get rid of this h v gate. Now, the first summing point which I have shown here we have reference voltage the output v c that is v c is coming from terminal voltage transducer and load compensator and from the reference we are subtracting this v c that is the output from the terminal voltage transducer and load compensator. Okay. Then this V s is the auxiliary signal which comes from power system stabilizer. Right. Therefore, in this summing point we have these three signals shown. Then the next summing point we have put the derivative feedback that is V f is the output of the excitation system stabilizer. Okay. And this V f is subtracted from the signal which is the V reference minus V c plus V s and the under excitation, under excitation limit can be injected here itself. Right. Therefore, there are two alternative ways of realizing the under excitation limit. Now, this, this uh, rate feedback transfer function is what we have discussed derived earlier the s times k upon 1 plus s times t f. Okay. Now, this transfer function model uh, represents the both, both self excited exciter 
self excited DC exciter and separately excited DC exciter. The only difference is in the in the parameters of the model particularly the KE right. Now, here one interesting thing which is done here is that when we have a self excited DC exciter we set the parameters in such a fashion. So, that we get the desired value of this field voltage with V r equal to 0 under steady state condition under steady state condition right the exciter uh, field rheostate is set in such a fashion. So, that the desired value of field voltage is obtained with with uh, output from the regulator equal to 0 that is V r is equal to 0 with V r equal to 0 we should be in the position to get the required value of EFD. The, the typical parameters of the DC 1 A exciter model are given below that is the parameters K A is 187, T A is 0.89. T e is 1.15, A e x equal to 0 0.014, B e x is 1.15, K f 0 0.058, T f 0 0.62, T b 0 0.06, T c 0.173, T r 0 0.05 and V r max 1.7 and V r mean 1 point minus 1.7. The K e is computed so that initially V r equal to 0 and load compensator is not used that is R c and X c will be set equal to 0 when they are not using the load compensator R c and X c will be set equal to 0. Now, if you see here actually then for this excitation system model we have large number of time constants gain settings right and the dynamic performance of this model is depends upon this time constants and when you design the excitation system right then these parameters have to be properly optimized or tuned so that we get a required dynamic performance. This is a quite an important exercise which is to be done right at the design stage and when you install this excitation system the excitation system parameters are required to be tuned to achieve the required dynamic performance. I have talked about what we mean by the required dynamic performance of the excitation system. Could you just tell me what are the required dynamic performance? Suppose I look from the point of view of say frequency response of the system. What are the parameters which are set for? Right. That is that is let me just mention here that the three parameters which you call is the gain margin, phase margin, bandwidth, and overshoot. Right. And the MP which was the overshoot that was to be from 1.05 to 1.15, phase margin should be greater than equal to 40 degrees. Similarly, the gain margin should be greater than equal to 6 dB and it should have a high bandwidth. Higher the bandwidth better will be the time response. The next model we will discuss is the model for AC exciter. Now, here let us again look into the model of the AC exciter which we had developed earlier. The AC exciter model is similar to the DC exciter model except it has additional features 
that is in this AC excitor <coughs> model the demagnetizing effect of the load current is accounted by putting a constant K D and the field current I F D that this is one point. Second is here output of this excitor is shown as V E V E which will be further processed through the rectifier or it will be rectified and be fed to the field winding of the synchronous machine right. Therefore, while modeling the complete AC excitation system I have represented this portion in the form of a block diagram. I will say this portion when I just put from this portion this whole thing I present I am representing in the form of a block diagram. That is you can see here the input is V R one output is V F E I am showing this V F E separately in the model V E and input is I F D ok. Now, this is to avoid the congestion on the same diagram the another very important uh, component of this AC excitation system model is the rectifier regulation model. In this rectifier regulation model again the input is V E and field current I F D the output is E F D. Therefore, again I will be showing this as input output model showing this V E as the input I F D as the input and E F D as the output. This we have already seen actually that to, to account for this rectifier voltage regulation the process is that we take the field voltage which is there which is flowing in the field winding of the synchronous generator. We take the output voltage of the AC exciter these two quantities are fed into this block to compute a current I n this I n is equal to K C I F D by V E. Now, this constant K C K C is function of commutating reactance K C is the function of commutating reactance ok. Then after computing this I n we fit this to a non linear transfer function that is F E x e equal to F of I n and the output of this block that is F E x F E x will be the out of this block right is multiplied with V E to get E F D. That is ultimately we can say that the as the loading of the uh, exciter increases right or depending upon the loading right the, the voltage which is applied to the field winding with synchronous generator and the voltage which is produced at the terminal of AC exciter they vary and this variation is determined by this multiplying factor F E x is F E x into V E is equal to E F D ok. Therefore, so far this model is concerned I have shown as input as V E and I F D and output E F D. We had also seen that then when the rectifier operates in different modes different modes uh, the function f n is defined as i function of i n that is this function is the function of i n is defined as the mode 1 operation 1 minus 0 0.557 into i n if i n is less than equal to 0 0.433 that is this three phase bridge type rectifier right is model model right. Uh, so, that we identify three different modes of operation mode 1, mode 2, mode 3 right and in mode 1 the I F D is such that or the field current I F D such that the I N which is computed quantity is less than equal to 0 0.433 right and this is the mode 1 operation. Similarly, in the mode 2 operation the this nonlinear function is 
square root of 0 0.75 minus i n square, where i n is in the limit 0 0.433 and 0 0.75. Okay. In the mode 3 operation, this, this function f i n is equal to 1.732 into 1 minus i n, where i n is greater than 0 0.75, greater than equal to 0 0.75 and less than equal to 1. Right? Now, I have given you the expression for computing this quantity i n earlier. Okay? Now, the as I told you that in AC excitation systems, we have different possible arrangements. The model which I will be discussing here that is AC 1 A model, that is IEEE type AC 1 A model, right? this model represents the brushless excitation system. It represents the brushless excitation system. Now, in the brushless excitation system, we have rotating AC exciter armature, rotating non control rectifiers and the field system, right. This is the rotating part and the, the control is exercised here by controlling, controlling the field current of the AC exciter. You can just see here actually that this is the AC exciter the field system is stationary okay, and by having a control current in the field winding of the AC exciter, we control the output of the brushless excitation system. Therefore, the model which I am discussing here that is AC 1 A model, right? it uh, pertains to it pertains to the brushless excitation system. Similarly, there are other uh, AC excitation system and the other models represent the other type of excitation systems because this variety of excitation system models have been given to take care of the different types of excitation systems, right? Because from one excitation system to another excitation system, some variations are there. Is it clear? Now, this block diagram gives you the complete model for the IEEE type AC 1 A excitation system. This is the IEEE type AC 1 A excitation system model. Now, here you can start from uh, the output side. Now, this block diagram represents the rectifier regulation model, rectifier regulation model. We have seen actually that rectifier regulation model input quantity was V e and field current I f d. That is you have to sense the field current of the synchronous generator and this field current is fed to this and output is E f d. Okay? Therefore, when you want to draw the complete diagram, if this block diagram can be replaced by the A c uh, uh, replaced by the uh, rectifier regulation model, okay, which had uh, which had actually uh, various components. The components again, let us see. The components here were the computation of I n and this nonlinear function, right? Therefore, basically, you compute the value of i n. There will be logic function here, okay? And this will give you the output f e x, and ultimately you get the output e f d, right? This is the rectifier regulation model. Then the next block is the AC exciter model. I have shown actually that. The output of the AC exciter model is V e, which is the terminal voltage of the exciter V e. The input were I f d, I f d uh, and the, the output from the regulator. 
that is the V R. V R is the input. Therefore, here this summing block I have shown separately. Okay. Therefore, in this summing block V R is compared with V F E, V F E which is taken as output from the AC exciter. Okay. Okay. Therefore, the, these two blocks can be represented by the detailed model to show the complete excitation system, the AC excitation system, AC one A uh, model of the excitation system. Now, the rest of these things we can start from the summing point. V reference is always required any uh, excitation system model. The V reference is with the positive polarity, V C is with negative polarity that is the output of the uh, terminal voltage transducer and load compensator. V A the stabilizing signal that is auxiliary signal V S the power system stabilizer output signal V S that we will show separately when we talk about power system stabilizers and the excitation system stabilizer that is V f this will come as a negative signal. Therefore, here I have shown in the same summing block all these signals the, the reference voltage, the terminal voltage, the auxiliary signal that is the power system stabilizer signal or there may be some other auxiliary signals also right and the excitation system stabilizer signal. The excitation system stabilizer input here is V F E, V F E while when you looked into the DC excitation system right the input to the excitation system uh, stabilizer was E F D that is the voltage is applied to the field winding state, state here, but here uh, since this is a nonlinear function and there is nothing to destabilize in this portion right because this relationship is a fixed relationship between the V e and E f d we have a fixed relationship right and therefore, input signal is taken from the AC excitor that is V f e which we had shown earlier. This is again a compensator which may or may not be required right this is again for the purpose of proper stabilization of the whole thing. Then amplifier model we have H v gate for realizing the under excitation limit U e L H v gate then the L v gate to realize the over excitation limit okay. and therefore, this becomes the complete model of the Uh, field control rotating rectifier excitation system right. Here as I have told you actually that the control is exercised by controlling the field current of the exciter right. In case you have the stat stationary rectifier system, stationary rectifier system then control is transferred from field circuit to the rectifier you can use control rectifier with different models have different uh, 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 different excitation systems will be controlled in a different manner because in the uh, in the case of um, brushless excitation system since the rectifiers are rotating they are not accessible therefore control cannot be put on the rectifier therefore they are non control rectifiers the control is on the field circuit of the exciter. The last model we will discuss will be the static excitation system, but before I talk about the static excitation system the typical parameters of AC 1 A exciter model are given here K 400 T A 0.02 this in this particular case T B and T C are set to be 0 it means compensator is not required K F is 0 0.03 
T f is 1.0, K e is 1, T e is 0 0.8, K c 0 0.2. What is this K c? A parameter which is function of commutating reactance and it is required to take care of the rectifier regulation characteristic. K d equal to 0 0.38, what is this K d? K d, we have discussed number of This is to take care of the armature reaction effect of the alternator that is AC exciter is an alternator right. Therefore, K d is 0 0.38, maximum minimum limits are 0 0.7.3 and 6.6 that is minus 6.6 that is minimum. V a max the output of the output of the amplifier can be 15 or minus 15 and the the saturation function is modeled by A x equal to 0.1 and B x equal to 0 0.03 right. Again these parameters are required to be tuned actually and these are the typical tuned parameters of a particular system. Therefore, this they are representative this should not be considered to be the uh, optimized parameter that is just represented to give some idea about the typical parameters of the excitation system. The last excitation system model which we will talk about the static excitation system model. The static excitation system model here I will discuss the excitation system model with exciter transformer. We have a control rectifier that is the excitation system power is derived through a exciter transformer is a three phase transformer right and the output of this is rectified using control rectifier and fed to the field winding of the gen machine of the synchronous machine through slip rings right and therefore, our regulator acts on control rectifier that is AC regulator which gets input from current transformer potential transformer this will directly act on the control rectifier. this is the very simple excitation system model time is over actually. Uh, I, I will just complete here of course, I may have to complete afterwards some more portion time is little bit over actually right. Uh, the, the model looks like this available. The model uh, looks like this it has all the functions similar the summing point is same you have V reference V c under excitation limit stabilizing signal the excitation system stabilizer right. This signal is called V i this is the whole summation on V i it is fed to H V gate this is fed to H V gate to uh, realize the under excitation limit then there is a compensator which is put here again ok then amplifier and the output signal which comes here is V s. Now, another uh, point which is shown here is that the stabilizing signal can be put at this point as or at the summing point itself there are two alternative ways you can put the stabilizing signal here right and the this is uh, fed to under excitation limiter then we have over excitation limiter and we get the output voltage from this. Now, here uh, this E f d max is function of terminal voltage that is E t V r max and the K c the constant depending upon the commutating reactance and I f d that is this maximum voltage is function of terminal voltage because, because the potential transformer takes its input from the terminal voltage itself right and minimum is E t into V r minimum ok. It also has a uh, field current under a, uh, a limiter field current limiter also is provided here right. This field current limiter is realized that you take this limiting value uh, compared with the field current then you have some gain setting and fed here. Now, this uh, completes the presentation of the different type of excitation system models and
I suggest you to look into the uh, IEEE standard uh, which is published in 1992 right for further details about the excitation system models. Thank you. Thank you.